What's going on today, YouTubers? Welcome to another edition of Walking Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at a mid-tech knife, and it's the mid-tech version of the Gavco Spinner. Uh, if this sounds familiar, it's because I just did a video on the Ferrum Forge mid-tech Gavco Spinner. This is the custom knife factory Gavco Spinner. Um, I think it's kind of cool that Michael Gavick um, collaborated with two different companies to make a mid-tech version of this exact knife uh, that were released almost simultaneously. I think the Ferrum Forge version came out first and then a month or two later the uh, Custom Knife Factory version came out. Um, I will compare the two of them um, after we get through the specs so let's go ahead and dive right into that. Uh, three and a half inch blade of Bowler M390 in a Tonto blade shape with flat ground main tip and false top edge. Uh, we do have a grinder satin finish on the flat and then a black PVD coating that's been stonewashed on the uh, the main bevels and the uh, that false top swedge as well. So that gives that, that distressed look, um, which I really like the look of. Um, I think I would probably have preferred it on the flat and then the satin on the bevels, but you know what? It, it still looks good this way. Uh, it gives it a little bit of character. Um, as far as opening methods, we have the uh, flipper tap here and then the oversized thumb opening uh, thumb opener there. Or I should just say hole opener because I, I rarely use my thumb. <laughs> I, I mostly flick it out with my uh, index finger, my pointer finger. Um, they did a really good job of finishing the hole opener. Um, it's nice and easy on the finger. It's not sharp. Um, it's not rough to the touch. The, I've seen lately some knives with the hole opener that don't seem to want to finish this, so it ends up really annoying your finger after a while of opening the knife. Uh, if you're like me and you like to play with your knives, open and shut them. Um, it can really irritate the finger after a while, so uh, thank you Custom Life Factory for thinking of that. As far as billboards on the blade, there's very little, just the Gavco knives and the Custom Life Factory logos uh, done very small and close to the uh, handle. Uh, it is serial numbered. And then... Uh, the blade steel designation. I think this is a limited run of 200 pieces. I believe so. That's usually how they tend to do most of their knives. Uh, limited to 200. Um, so, three and a half inch blade, four and a half inch handle, overall length eight inches. Obviously, the handles are titanium. I don't know why I say obviously every time, but I think by this point it kind of is obvious because that's like the most ubiquitous knife material um, in use right now is titanium for the handles. So as you can see it's had a whole bunch of work done. Um, it's been milled in this kind of almost like a sunburst pattern and then in the valleys and in the little crooks there, uh, I guess nook or crook, whatever, in the little gaps, <laughs> you have that same distressed stonewashed PVD finish. And then um, obviously, obviously again, on the, uh, the top there, it's been completely worn off. So you get the contrast between um, the titanium and then the dark uh, stonewashed pieces or the dark stonewash portions. Sorry, it's kind of hard to talk when you have bugs trying to crawl in and out of your eyeball. Um, I love this park because my dog loves it, but it's a nightmare as far as bugs go. They attack. <laughs> they attack hard. So I guess it's a good thing I have a knife on me. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, it's got the same 
sunburst pattern on both sides. It's got a milled 3D titanium pocket clip with the also the same, um, well, similar pattern. I shouldn't say the same. It does match, but it's not the same pattern. I love, love, love when makers do this clip. They start off with a um, thicker piece of titanium and they mill it down very thin. Obviously, it probably takes more work, but it, they can shape it properly and it's not just some big hunk of titanium that's supposed to keep the knife in your pocket um, when in fact it just makes it a nightmare to put in and out of your pocket. As far as construction goes, um, we have the stop pin screws and then two body screws. We do have a nearly full length backspacer, titanium backspacer, given that same PVD distressed look and then just a little opening there. Um, lock up is with the steel lock bar insert and over travel stop. The pivot hardware is all, well I should say all of the hardware has been PVD coated. Um, and the pivot is one sided. So this does run on caged ceramic bearings with a ceramic detent and the action is incredibly smooth. Um, just a real, real treat to use this thing. I could, I could do this all day long, just flip it and close it, flip it and close it. And I like the option there to do the um, thumb hole opener or the hole opener. <clears throat> I can't really get this one with my thumb. Uh, the detent's just a little too strong for me to practically do that. Um, so I find myself doing the, uh, the middle finger flick, the spidey flick. <clears throat> Fit and finish is all spot on. Blade is dead center. Um, they've done obviously a tremendous amount of work with these handles. Because you can see all of the edges here are rounded and they've given it that kind of like craggy look. <clears throat> um, ergonomically, again, extremely comfortable. Um, Gavco's, all of Michael Gavick's designs tend to be extremely ergonomic. Uh, they tend to be ergonomic first and then maybe uh, aesthetic second. Um, you have the uh, finger groove here, uh, a second kind of groove for the rest of your fingers and then this dip here for your thumb so excellent excellent and as far as this milling goes obviously really really great for um, grip uh, it gives you a lot to hold on to um, the blade is excellent not probably the most public friendly blade on a pocket knife you can carry. It looks extremely aggressive um, with that kind of tanto slash harpoonish look. Um, but the tip is extremely, incredibly fine for detail work. And then you have a really great um, and thin behind the edge uh, back portion here for slicing. So really, really useful blade shape. But again, probably not the most public friendly there's your lockup, probably about 30%, 35%. Um, I love that action. It's not the strongest detent, but it's just the, the right balance for when you, you want to do the hole opener and the flipper tab. It's kind of hard to judge, you know, do I make it a really great flipper or do I make it real easy to open with the, the hole? Um, they, they got a really good balance at CKF. This is probably... I'm trying to think how many other CKF knives I've owned. You know what? I shouldn't say that this is my favorite CKF flipper because I've done a video on that, like the Rattata or whatever, and that thing is crazy smooth too. Um, I also have another CKF knife I've got to do a video on, the uh, Decepticon 4, which is like the compact version. Um, so I shouldn't say that this is my favorite CKF flipper because that Rattata is crazy smooth. Uh, as far as weight goes, we're looking at 4.3 ounces. This is a much thinner knife than that Ferrum Forge version. You know what, let's go ahead and get into the comparisons now. Um, 
action, flipping action. Um, I'm going to give them a tie on that one. I, I will give them a tie on the flipping action. Closing action, no question, CKF, way, way smoother. Um, but as far as like just straight knife coming out of the handle or blade coming out of the handle, I'll give that a tie because the Ferrum Forge version is a pretty good flipper as well. Um, as far as aesthetically, I prefer this one. I think the fact that it's matching um, where, the, where the Ferrum Forge version is not and yeah, that, that goes a long way. Uh, pocket clip, 100% better on this knife. This knife has a much slimmer profile. Um, it's a little bit lighter. Um, as far as the capabilities of the blade, like if we're talking just tool-wise, I, I think I have to give the edge to this one again because although I might be a little more hesitant to pull it out in public with that extremely acute edge and then um, really nice flat grind to keep it really thin behind the edge. This thing is crazy sharp and um, really, really great to use in like the kitchen uh, or opening packages, that kind of thing. So I'll probably give the edge to this one. Um, overall, this one I think is way better than the Ferrum Forge. I shouldn't say way better, it's better. Um, first of all, the Ferrum Forge version is like 500 bucks. This is 370. So you're already saving, um, shit, you're already saving 130 bucks um, by getting this one. Uh, blade steel wise, they're pretty even. Um, 20 CV is a damn nice steel. Uh, but so is Bowler M390. You're not going to notice any difference in edge retention. So uh, I'll have to give them a tie on that. Ugh. Again, uh, you're getting a you're getting a much better deal with this. Um, you're getting this this action here um, for less money than you would you would be paying for the Ferrum Forge version. I like the guys at Ferrum Forge, um, and they probably have a much more hands-on approach to their knives than Custom Knife Factory, but the finished product is what matters. Um, so I have to I have to give it to Custom Knife Factory. They, they ended up with a much better finished product. Again, not much better, but better. So yeah, um, apologies uh, to you know, Ferrum Forge fans. I'm a Ferrum Forge fan. It's just that this this is on another level, um, functionally, and uh, again, it's less expensive. So, no doubt in my mind, I got to give the uh, the victory here to the Gavco Custom Life Factory collaboration. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Um, like I said, I have uh, another Custom Life Factory knife that I have to do a review on. Um, I have a custom Genzanso that I have to do a review on. I should start asking you guys what you want to see first um, because I never, I never can decide. I'm, I look at my table where I set out the knives that need reviews and I'm just like, what the hell do I do? What am I going to do now? <laughs> All right, guys, that's it uh, for this one. Um, you know, stay tuned for more videos. I've got so many knives to review, so take it easy.